Hey guys, we're at the Electric Bike Outfitters headquarters in Denver. I'm with the founder here. This is Jason. These guys have been around since 2012. Uh, they've been in this shop for, I don't know how many years now. It's where I was last year, right? Yeah. Uh, about 2015 we moved 2015 in. so before we get out there and actually look at the bikes I just wanted to highlight some of the differences with the 2019 and 2020 kits they've got these awesome color display upgrades you can get landscape portrait that does cost a little bit more they've got these integrated light options which is really cool because their batteries have also been upgraded it used to be 11.6 amp hours now it's 12.8 so a little bit more capacity over 600 watt hours they still have rear rack or down tube and they call this one uh, the burley and then the cruiser over here and one of the biggest upgrades that i've noticed is that your motors actually have an additional hall sensor so jason's busted out the sample motors. Maybe these ones are just kind of demos. It's really cool to see up close like this. So this is the older one and it actually had three hall sensors. You can see the black wiring going there to uh, basically see those like flat rectangular pieces around the edge. Those are rare earth magnets. And then this copper winding that creates electromagnetic uh, pull and that's what turns the motor so you can see the evolution here see that circuit board and now this is the most recent one and it has a fourth hall sensor which adds a more consistent speed reading so you're just getting a more responsive uh, experience and and one that also gives you a more accurate speed on the display the default display looks like this it's grayscale it does have a usb port on the side full size usb type a i did test it with my iphone actually i was actually messing with this one just a minute ago so i can confirm that it works pretty cool pretty cool just lots of options and i wanted to show the store before we get out there because to me this is what really sets their kits apart um Look at all these wheel sizes, you guys. You can go 16, 20 inch, 24, 26, 27.5, 28, 29, whatever you need, they can do it. And they've got this shop back here with all the parts and everything, all the different cables. They do custom cable lengths. So a minute ago, we had like our long recumbent bike and that's a pretty popular uh, bike to electrify. They tend to be a little bit heavier and maybe if you're in a recumbent, you want something that's stable and maybe your knees or your hips are sensitive. So that's something that a lot of your customers do, right, Jason? Yeah, we uh, uh, do a lot of recumbents, uh, you know, rear motors, front motors, and I think uh, you have a lot of people that are, you know, aging disabilities, and you know, the recumbents really gives them a lot of options, especially the front motors. There's not a lot of people, I don't think, doing front motors. Yeah. Um, and you got a lot of recumbents, you know, trike style, where there's one motor in the front and having that ability to electrify that because uh, sometimes you can't do a mid-drive, you obviously can't do a rear motor, so right. that's your option. It's so um, cool. So your, your bike that you've been sitting on for years, you don't want to ride because you can't quite do it anymore, you can do it again. Yeah, and I, I, we were, I was kind of asking him, quizzing him before I got here, like, well, you know, how many people are buying rear motor versus front? Because rear gives you better traction, but it's a little bit more work to install this thing. And by the way, they can work with single speed, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, even 10 speed, but it depends on the, the dropout spacing. So 135, 142, even 145 in the rear hub spacing, that's how wide it is. Up front, 100 is pretty standard, but they, they can also do 110 boost hub spacing because uh, they've got all the spacers and stuff. So for me, that was just phenomenal. And he said, you know, it's the majority of people do get the rear motor, uh, but here in Denver, where you guys are located, you've been selling a lot of those front ones because it's the recumbent things. Yeah, pretty popular. Here locally, I'd say we're probably more in the 50% to 75% range on front motors, um, but we're doing a lot more medical bikes locally because we're here and the bike shops can quickly get to us. And cargo bikes tend to have a lot of front wheel motors too, which is pretty popular now in Denver. Yeah, well, and the other really cool thing about uh, this company versus maybe some of the other kits that I've seen out there is you work with shops and you said, I don't know if we can say that 75% of your sales are through shops. Yeah, at and, least. And they Not can more. support the installation, they can get it done right. If you look at the, the cadence sensor, we've got one here that's sort of in the process of being uh, mounted. So that actually goes on like the spindle, you kind of mount it in there. You do need a crank puller. There's a little bit more work to actually get the, the disc on here, eight magnet disc. Um, but it's gonna be a little bit more sturdy, a little bit more reliable than some of the ones where you're just zip tying a little I don't know how do you have that one we can look at real quick so their, their stuff is a little bit more reliable they've got a year-long comprehensive warranty and if you're working with a shop it's just going to be installed a little bit better so the experience overall is better than a, a lot of these kinds of things so, so you zip tie that to 
kind of a portion of your seat tube and then it sort of pivots in and out to get closer or further away and a lot of these these bigger discs some of them they kind of just click on after you don't have to does that one like that yeah, yeah. see that metal thing it's like a, a clamp that but see how big that is and it's just it's a little clunkier so i feel like you've, you've got a happy medium of a kit that shops are comfortable installing a lot of individuals install and you can support your equipment really well um but you're still empowering people to reduce reuse and recycle an existing yeah. frame or electrify something that isn't offered in as an e-bike yeah yeah and it's pretty affordable so these two kits you know i'm today we're looking at the burley and uh is would you call it like the cruiser kit with that yes. rear rack the cruiser kit is going to weigh a little bit more this battery pack it's like seven point eight pounds versus 7.2 pounds on on the mid battery and then even just this frame this metal frame but really nice with the paneer blocker and you've got a little bungee attachment point and stuff a little bit more rear heavy in this case you're balancing it out with that front motor uh, there are some slight differences but they share a lot of the same parts and a lot of the same upgrade options so what was another you you have a trigger throttle or you can do twist throttle half grip or even full grip twist yeah, throttle here's a sample of the twist here oh nice very nice yeah and all of your you include brake levers like mechanical brake levers these five star right here and they've got that motor inhibitor on both of them so that's going to cut power and give you control over the system but if you have these nice hydraulic brakes see they've just glued on these sensors so they really care about safety this kit what this one's the high powered one isn't it it is it's a 750 750 watt, watt. but we were just talking about Again, these two, they share the same motor. It could be rear mounted or front mounted. 350 watts nominal, but it peaks at like 816 that's watts, correct. right? And yeah, that's pretty awesome. Silver or black, and you know, you notice a black battery casing on that, but silver back here, this could be black if you wanted to. So there's a lot of mixing and matching and the lengths and everything. So for me, you know, the, these kits, it's like 1425, right? Yes. Okay, so, you know, I've seen stuff online where it's just one size fits all, and this is what it is, a little bit cheaper, but this to get it done right to get it installed correctly and stuff you're paying a little bit more but that's why i enjoy coming to visit you and seeing all these examples jason yeah that's well, the thanks. value that you offer so these are some of the the chargers over here you can see they're like a pound and a half two amp that i've seen faster chargers and i comment on that frequently if i'm reviewing like a bosch powered bike or something they have a four amp charger but a lot of the the more affordable bosch uh, systems they actually do a two amp charger lighter smaller so i think um that's pretty standard okay we were talking about trikes a minute ago and jason was like we got all these cool examples let's check it out and it took me to my favorite one first love this thing it's got rear suspension those fat tires give you a lot of comfort what what is this one called uh, this is a fat tad um yeah. and we put a 750 motor on it uh this customer uh basically has a medical condition and lives on a dirt road and wants to be able to just ride around a little bit so this one's pretty fun okay but we also want a distance so we're doing a dual battery system for them oh yeah you got the two right that's the other thing you can like how many batteries have you done like what's the most in uh, one system I've, I've done four batteries on one bike wow um, does do they have to unplug and plug in or how do you no, route all those we'll put them in parallel or you know we we can do all sorts of different things parallel series different batteries in and make it whatever they want wow okay and then some of the other trikes in there what do we got here and which ones of these have like the burley or the um, so this so all these guys here are actually all burley systems um and uh, actually all of these are um for the most part i believe all going for medical um situations everything from strokes to ms parkinson's wow uh so we work with a local bike shop that works with uh, craig hospital and they do a lot of different bikes for people different situations so uh, these trikes tend to be really good for them because uh, balance issues or any kind of situation going on so yeah uh, and it, we did want to kind of show this to you because uh, this, this is kind of unique um, you know we do 16 and 20 inch front wheels which you know a lot of these trikes require hmm. uh, that gets people on an electric bike which they may not realize they could electrify yeah, and it's so much lower and look at the the body position and everything. These are these are really cool. I'm going to come back to show you guys how they've mounted the battery here. So that's the Burley battery, the one that would be mid-frame mounted and it's just sitting on that flat bar in the this, rear. This guy here uses that uh T-cycle mount. A really neat company um that makes custom mounts for trikes. Very cool. 
Wow, I like that. It kind of hangs off to the side and it looks like this is custom machine bracket that fits around that main tube. Yeah, it brings the center of gravity down very low on the bike. And, and this is the controller box, right? Yeah, this one's a little more powerful. This, this guy is uh, a pretty large guy and uh, he was very concerned about having enough power and everything. Um, you know, it's probably a little bit of overkill, um, but you know, the customer requested it and you know, it's still a great motor. Um, I would have gone something a little smaller. What's this one called? This is our Clydesdale. That's the Clydesdale. That's right. It's like the workhorse. It is the workhorse. Um, you know, typically we're putting them on big cargo bikes or we're putting them on pedicabs. Hmm. Uh, we don't usually put them on individual bikes, but you know, nice this big guy torque just went, went zero concern of getting around. Yes, so, that makes sense. That makes sense. Get it done right. And, uh, I, what I like about, you know, the Burley kit here is that the controller is built in to that, that mm -hmm. box, isn't it? And then over here, the controller is right there and the battery slides into this. So, um, yeah, when you go to the larger systems, you get a bigger controller, you can't integrate it. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have this big box here. That's basically holding the brains. Okay. Well, again, just need to see what's possible when you, you, when you have that good relationship and you have like the custom wires and everything like that, I, that makes a big difference. I've installed these myself and sorry, I'm not actually showing an installation here today, but part of the reason that I've skipped that on these bikes is because so many people get them from shops and then the shops do the work. Yes. And uh, I think it's really cool. So, okay, now we want to get out there, <laughs> take a ride. a ride, hop on these bikes. Okay guys, we followed the plat and we found a beautiful spot downtown. Did some riding around here and I just want to take you through the Burley kit. This is actually my favorite kit that Electric Bike Outfitters offers. Uh, because the battery weight is right there, low and centered on the frame. That's excellent, but of course it does take up your bottle cage bosses. Um, and for someone who wants to bring along water that they can reach, that could be a, a little bit of a bummer. It's definitely a trade-off and only being mounted to a couple of bolts to the frame. And this feels pretty solid, but it's not quite as solid as a purpose-built electric bike, which tend to cost more. So, you know, it's, it's an understandable trade-off. And then all those trikes and things that we've saw that they converted where the battery's in the back or it's on some other rails and stuff. There's a lot of options and there are shops that can actually add threaded like brazons to your frame. So you can go nuts with this, but the default configuration we see here is, is pretty good. Uh, battery pack here, a little bit lighter than the cruiser one, the, the rear rack style battery. This is just 7.2 pounds, not too bad. It does have a little USB charging port built right in which is awesome. And in the past, they disabled that because they were talking about phantom power draw and it just wasn't set up right, so they disabled it. Now it works. But again, having access to a USB right up there at the display where you can mount your phone or maybe a different headlight if you didn't want to get their um, optional one, you do have to pay a little bit more for that, pay a little bit more for the display as well. The grayscale display works fine, but it's kind of neat to see color. It's very big. It's got a lot of cool options I'm going to show you later. Here's the charging port. I like that it's positioned up high on the battery versus down here where the cranks are. A lot of times, I don't know why, but a lot of electric bikes have like plugs and things and even keyed um, slots down low and, and they could just get bumped easier. So I like that this one's up high. It's got a little charge level indicator right there, a fuse. So it's a pretty, it seems like a pretty reliable pack. Uh, and then we hop over to the other side same thing, the key is up high, not down low, and there is a power switch. That's one of the trade-offs with this kit for me. You can't control everything just from up here. You can't turn the bike on. You have to first press that button. Uh, but that is one way to reduce phantom power draw if you know you're not gonna be riding your bike for a long time, and to maybe keep people from tampering with it at the bike rack. Of course, it is removable, which is really great for people who wanna bring this battery inside. Let's see here, I think I got it unlocked. Pulling up, there we go. Just trying to be careful. Slides off. That's a 48 volt, 12.8 amp hour. Easy to carry with that little latch at the top, almost doubles as a handle. You can see the two bosses I was talking about there, two bolts that hold the bracket onto the frame and then all those cables coming out and they're really well managed here because of course this is their demo bike and they want it to look great, but there are a lot of cables. So you can see this side of the bike, it's a little bit more busy. That's one of the trade-offs when you do a kit versus a purpose-built bike. And I'm just gonna try to line this up, push it down, lock it into place. Not bad, that went on pretty smoothly. 
So having a dark colored frame like this helps to hide the cables. And of course, if you're working with a the shop, they're gonna do a really good job like this. These are the Wuxing five-star levers with the motor inhibitors. It's kind of like a three or four finger lever. It doesn't have the rubberized edge or a bell or anything, but it gets the job done. And that safety element with the, the motor inhibitor is something I always look for. Uh, independent button pad, it's gonna be easier to reach out here. And then the display swivels, but it doesn't, it doesn't uh, come off the frame. So coming back to that battery for a second, uh, I always recommend, you know, storing that in a cool dry location because extreme heat is going to wear those cells down faster. They do use LG cells, so pretty high quality, uh, 3,200 milliamp, I think, per cell. And yeah, you know, with their decent warranty from these guys and a company that you can actually call and get some help from, that's part of what you're paying for is uh, a nicer battery and, and better support and stuff. And then down here we have the eight magnet sensor. The last time I looked at this, I was like, well, there are 12 magnet sensors. Now there are little sealed ones that are even smaller. But for a kit, this is pretty good. And it's actually working a lot better than it used to because of that additional hall sensor in the motor. So you can see down here, here's the electrical sensor and then there are the magnets. And as they pass by, as you pedal, they pass by and it, it sends the signal to the controller and the motor activates really smoothly. Here's the motor again. This weighs about 5.25 pounds if it's not spoked into the wheel or anything. And we do have extra thick 12 gauge spokes. It's designed to be pretty sturdy. And then they, they custom spoke these at the shop. They've got all the parts and everything. Machine sidewalls on these rims, so they would work with uh, linear pull brakes, V brakes, uh, but they also work with disc brakes, which you can see down here. But the number of gears that it's gonna be compatible with really depends on your your hub spacing so if you have 135 millimeter hub spacing and you have a disc brake you might only be able to get seven gears but they've told me they could do a single speed five six seven eight nine ten speeds maybe you have like 142 millimeter hub spacing and uh, that's pretty cool they use shimano or sunrace so there's just a lot of customizing it can do to make it work for your bike in this case we have a rear derailleur and a front derailleur works just fine uh, the bike accelerates really well We've got the throttle, so you can override assist. The way the way it's set up is just is awesome for me. I, I really like this design, so I'm gonna go through and turn it on here. A little blue LED backlight going on. Uh, press the power button. It boots up extremely quickly. Four bars on that battery infographic. It says 52.5 volts. Speed in the center, really big, easy to read. Starts in assist level three. You can take it down to zero, and then I just wanna double check this. See if we get the, uh, yeah. So you do have a trigger throttle activated in pedal assist and it overrides and I, I love that. So zero all the way up to five. Beautiful, we've got temperature, motor watts, distance, timer. Press that power button, it cycles through to average speed, max speed, everything you'd, you'd expect. This is a KT display. Um, and then again, has the USB on the back. For me, that's such a big deal. This is a really nice display. You do have to pay a little bit more for it, but it could be worth it for a lot of people. I can actually see this pretty well, but I'm, I imagine you may not be able to because it is so bright and the camera just isn't getting, uh, it's, you know, trying to balance out the brightness. If I hold the up button, we get the headlight, which is really nice. If I hold the down button, I think we're gonna get walk assist. There we go, very nice. Okay, so this new color display, in order to get into the settings, you have to power it on. And then within the first five, seconds and then you hold up and down so i'm going to do that right now there we go and look at all these settings they're all on one screen it's a little bit confusing because there's just all these numbers like p1 p2 p3 c1 c2 and they've got a really nice manual back at the website that explains all of that so there's just a ton of adjustability I actually classified this as class one class two class three and class four potential because you don't have to run with the throttle, you can take that off. And if you just limited the top speed to 20 miles per hour, you'd be class one. If you add the throttle up to 20, well, that's class two. Take the throttle off again, go to 28, roughly, that's class three. Add the throttle back, now you're at class four, which is just something I kind of made up. It's like uh, something that doesn't really fit into the traditional electric bicycle classes. It's kind of like a, a moped experience. Maybe you could get a license, add some lights and stuff, but really that's for like private property use and stuff. So anyway, that's, that's a pretty good, overview on this bike i i'm just you know i i like when you can meet with someone and you can get a kit set up just right for your bike there are some trade-offs as with with any kit where um you know the battery is external and it's only mounted to 
the bosses on the frame. But a lot of those things can be overcome if you're a tinkerer or you've got the help of that shop. So for me, this is a this is a brand that I, I trust. It's a kit that I appreciate. And uh, I do want to point out here, while we're on the subject of durability, that the uh, motor power cable, this is, it's got a quick disconnect, but it does protrude on the right side of the axle. Just keep an eye on that. That's something that if the bike tips over or if you get hung up, you don't wanna have that break. And so I have seen, see how there's a threaded eyelet right there? There's those derailleur guards that sometimes you can put on and it would just create another layer of protection here. So it's just a final thought on that. So he's on the cruiser right there. I'm on the burly. Definitely noticing the cadence sensor picking up a lot faster than in the past. I think that fourth hall sensor really helps. Speed reading up here has been really consistent. That was one of my complaints in the past. It was just, it was kind of like, it didn't feel like it was reading it right. Uh, sort of threw me off. See Denver over there. Just a lot of friendly cyclists around here. I think there's a children's museum and REI headquarters that we're going to. Just a wonderful area to ride. <laughs> Beautiful. We've seen a couple people in those little kick scooters and the different skateboard type of things. Everyone's getting along great. Wow. Downtown Denver, Six Flags. Normally I'd be talking about stability, right? Like, can you ride no-handed? Which I can on this bike, but th these bikes, it really comes down to which bike you have uh, and, and what you choose to install. If you do that front motor, like Jason has, it's going to decrease your stability a little bit while you're riding. I, I, maybe not, I, I guess it's just more, it adds weight. So as you're steering, there's a little bit more momentum. I definitely prefer the rear mounted motor, but it does take a little bit more effort to install that. Just keep that in mind if you're considering one or the other and you've got a traditional bike like we have. Okay guys, from here you can see the 350 watt planetary geared hub motor 700C, that's the wheel size. And then we've got a seven speed cassette right here. So this is like 14 to 28. It's kind of kind of basic actually. This is Shimano Turnia. I see this on a lot of uh, just kind of affordable bikes, but it's paired with like a triple chain ring. And so that's one of the cool things about a hub motor. It really doesn't affect your drivetrain and whatever you've got set up. As long as it's not a planetary geared hub, <laughs> then you're fine. So. You'd need to get like a front hub motor in that case. I'm just gonna start pedaling. I've got you aimed down here so you can see how quickly this thing responds. I was really impressed with that. It's it's definitely, it's a, it's a big step up, you know, just really smooth and effective. Here we go, I'm in the highest level of assist. So I actually started in a little bit of a lower gear. You can see right here, I'm actually in the lowest gear on the rear middle gear up front. So it took a minute to sort of get up to speed and activate that cadence sensor. But once I did, any little motion really activated quickly. The speed reading was good. And then I switched into throttle mode and you could you could hear the motor at those higher speeds. And it's a little, you know, kind of a zzz, but planetary geared hub motors are known for being relatively lightweight and they freewheel efficiently. There's no drag, like cogging. It works pretty well. And I like that they, they have the different colors so you could get silver or black to match your frame. Okay, so in order to turn this light on, I just wanted to show you guys, uh, let's see, turn the battery on down here. And then we turn the display on. Looks pretty nice. Got the beautiful color, adjustable angle. And then you would just hold the up button right here and then there we go, pretty nice, very bright. And this is the Herman's H drive. You can see it shining way back there on the wall. Go ahead and hit the lights, Jason. 
yeah. This is a pretty nice light. I feel like it would help you see and be seen. Um, there's a little bit of a lens extension, so even from the side, you can see it a little bit. Some of the new lights have like blades and stuff on the side, which is pretty cool, but this is this is a bright light. I am, I'm impressed. So if you do decide to upgrade and add that, again, it's nice to just be able to run off the main battery and not have to worry about taking a light off with you every time. It's, it's more of a permanent mount. In this case, it, mounted on both of these bikes to the top of the fork. Right, here's Ocean Journey. Cool aquarium in Denver. We're just right in the heart of everything. Well, we rode here from uh, Jason's headquarters. So he says they come out here and they test the bikes. What a great place to do that, huh? Especially on a summer day like this. Beautiful. It's that famous building downtown with the kind of half circle notch at the top. I grew up in Colorado, so my parents used to take us on walks around here. Just get outside, enjoy the nice weather. It's really special. In this area, that used to be a, a train station and REI bought it and made it one of their flagship, kind of a headquarter store. Did a really cool job preserving the, uh, the architecture. They've got a freestanding rock climbing wall in there. This is a little like kayaking spot, I think. Maybe tubing they put together. And especially if you're at high altitude, you're not used to it. Having that little electric assist can be a really nice thing. Beautiful. Good spot, buddy. Yeah, it's a pretty nice spot. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, I think that's about it. That is the Electric Bike Outfitters Burley kit. It's a 48 volt. For the full written review, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. And of course, chime in if you have experience working with this brand or, you know, if you're a shop, you have more questions, give Jason a call. He does a good job and he's been around since 2012. So for me, that's that's a long time. That's when I started Electric Bike Review. This was a while back. And um, yeah, I just, I love to hear your feedback, your insights. There are some trade off with kits, you know, the wires and stuff are a little bit more exposed. Um, but it's kind of neat that you could convert your bike for, you know, under 1500 bike bucks, like any type of bike. Love you guys, ride safe. We'll see you next time.